Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video, I'd like to speak with you about flatbeds, reefers and dry vans in 2024. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. As always, guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about flatbeds, reefers, dry vans, kind of a prediction for 20 24, although take this with a big pinch of salt because anything and everything can, uh, you know, basically happen. Anything and everything can change on, uh, you know, snap of the fingers in 2024 with all the economic instability, global instability, instability in the United States, everything that you see in the news. Uh, and of course, the trucking market, the trucking industry is under the gun. Uh, if you will, for these three trailer types. Now, these are the, uh, the vast majority of the industry is gonna be your uh, vans and reefers and flatbeds. Everything else is gonna be jumping into specialized as well as smaller LTL equipment and you know uh, that kind of stuff, the smaller stuff. We're not gonna look at that. We're gonna look at the three primary pieces of equipment. So I will warn you, this part of the video is likely to be longer than what you're used to, but stick around. And uh, in the second portion, of course, as always, we'll switch over and look at the loads that we book for our customers. So uh, without further ado, guys, jumping into flatbeds, what do we have? Guys, the contract market for the flatbeds is uh, it, it's tightening. So that's a very, very good thing. The rejection rates are up. Uh, and again, this isn't a contract market. However, as we will see throughout the year, there's a, there is correlation between one and the other. This is good for the spot market as well, where 99% of you guys are in who are watching uh, these videos who are also truckers. Moving on, March of 2022, let's rewind back. That's when the flatbed decline actually began. You could see it charted, completely takes a big dive, and it took forever for things to normalize. They still haven't done so. The average flatbed rejection rate for 2023, the entire year average, was over 10%. And you have to remember a couple of things. Uh, well, I guess in this case, three things, manufacturing, energy, and construction. Those are the three primary uh, industries that are mainly served by flatbed. And generally those things slow down uh, during you know, winter time. And also the COVID pandemic really had a big hit on flatbed. Many of you guys who uh, you and I spoke with on the phone might remember I had mentioned that as vans and reefers rebounded, they corrected, they saw major increases in rates, in, uh, in freight volume, did not happen for flatbed. So generally flatbed slows in the winter because of production issues and because of, uh, of, of weather issues. Now, what we generally saw uh, were major fluctuations and major swings in pricing as well as rejection rates and flatbed actually hit a 20% mark three times in 2023. We're talking about your outbound tender rejection rates in the contract market for flatbed trailers, all right? Still with me? Uh, based on annual rejection index, based on the same chart that I was looking at, just as my humble opinion, I can be absolutely wrong, but I expect improvements by the end of February. So starting the end of February, beginning of March is probably closer. If we're on the money, right on the money, that's the time you should look for improvements in the flatbed market. Expect price swings in 2024. Uh, I believe that flatbed will see bigger and more uh, price swings in 2024 than the other uh, two pieces of equipment. Now, jumping on to reefers. Those of you with reefers, uh, congratulations for 2020 through 2021. That was a very best trailer to have, to be able to make top money and do it e uh, easier. Uh, than vans and reefers with more money in your pocket. Now, reefer rejection rates in 2023 were at 6%, so considerably lower than flatbedders. Uh, reefer rejection is normally up around the holidays, and we saw that the highest peaks of reefer rejection rate were around major holidays of 2023. Now, 2023 generally was seen better than 2022, so there, there was room for improvement and the market took advantage of that. Now, as far as breaking down the market areas, and this will make a lot more sense when you consider the weather outside, the northern markets and the Midwest 
had the highest reef rejection rates, meaning that they generally would see higher amounts of freight coming into the spot market with higher pricing. Now, reefer capacity in the Pacific Northwest was down, generally for two reasons. Uh, the Pacific Northwest is very, very seasonal. Basically, uh, major holidays, Christmas, uh, we're talking Christmas trees, things like that. Those shipments dry out and uh, also harvest season. Uh, if Once that's over, we see major uh, you know, decreases in pricing and rejection rates generally decline. So there, there is uh, you know, uh, some understanding there. Plus there was uh, you know, low demand, so a lot of the equipment moved to other markets as markets generally uh, fluctuate. Truckers move around their dispatchers. If they're good, they're gonna move them around to the hotter markets. That's what our guys do. Now, generally reefer capacity is down, uh, which is good. It is decreasing, which is good. And as far as uh, price and volume, uh, it's expected to improve throughout 2024. No night and day difference, but do expect changes. Now, near term, we're looking at mid-February to March, uh, very similar to the flatbed market. Mid-February and March, uh, to beginning of March for reefers. Now, let's jump into dry vans. Dry van rejection rates uh, were just over 3%, barely scraping by the lowest of the top three. Dry vans are basically everywhere now. They're a dime a dozen. Everybody ran to rent one, and uh, we're seeing consistently low rejection rates when it comes to uh, specifically dry van freight, uh, dry van equipment type, uh, and, and dry van only basically. Now what we're obviously seeing here is a major overcapacity issue that will only take time to fix itself. Uh, it was the lowest performer uh, since May of 2023. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Out of the three, definitely way too many dry vans out there in the market and you guys are feeling a pinch. So a quick pro tip for you guys uh, and do with this information uh, what you wish. A contract market shipment uh, rejection to uh, rejection rate, so a switch over to the spot market. So the once the rejection happens, pricing has to come up. Pricing generally comes up because it goes to spot market and it has to be moved pronto. That differential percentage is 14.8%. Like I said, do with that what you will. Finally, the spot market rejection rate is lower than a contract market. So adjust the numbers accordingly, but when you see one come up, the same thing happens in the other. So guys, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, you know, I'd love to see you guys in the next section of the video. Uh, the loads are good. We got all three uh, you know, trailer types in there. Definitely not one to miss. I'll see you in just a moment. Guys, welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads, vans, reefers, and a flatbed. Everyone did well, including dry van guys. In fact, we're gonna start off with a dry van. Absolutely phenomenal numbers. Reggie uh, absolutely killed it. Now, starting off out of Lawrence, Kansas with a one pick, three dropper to Wichita, Kansas, Norman, Oklahoma, and a final in Ardmar, Oklahoma. Now, this was a 6,200 uh, pound load of general freight for American freight stores. Uh, short run, 422 miles, booked at 2,300 bucks, got them 545 a mile there. Then Grand Prairie, Texas, coming out to Midwest City, Oklahoma. It's a 13,000 pound load of finished goods, 212 miles, booked at 660 bucks, got them 311 a mile, got them moved over. Now out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, took a load to Clarksville, Arkansas. It's a 43,187 pound load of bottled water for Walmart. Short run, 239 miles, booked at 820 bucks, got them 343 a mile there. Then Hot Springs, Arkansas to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Short runs, 20,000 pound load of plastic uh, parts, 186 miles on that one, $800 booked, got them 430 a mile. And he finished off real strong out of Baxter, Kansas, coming out to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a 40,000 pound load of FAK, 921 miles booked at 3373, got them 366 a loaded mile on that one. So as you can see, it pays to run the short, run, uh, short runs. Now, Reggie, he did something interesting. From Friday morning to Thursday night was his drive time. $7,953 in gross, did that in six days, got an amazing 402 per loaded mile on his 1,980 loaded miles. Excellent job, Reggie, very efficient, very effective. Good stuff. Next, we're gonna go to a flatbed coming out of Reno, uh, Nevada, of course, going to Simi Valley, California. The driver on this one's Eric, pulling a, a 48 for flatbed, 15,000 pound load of machinery parts. It was a strap and go type of load, 470 miles booked at 1400 bucks, got him 298 a loaded mile on that one. Then Carson, California coming out to Pruitt, New Mexico with a 30,000 pound load of Lynx uh, reels. North tarping on this one, 700 uh, miles on the dot, booked at 2100 bucks, got him $3 a mile flat. Then Albuquerque, New Mexico to Butte, Montana. It's a 48,000 pound load of palletized minerals. Tarping was required, 1,012 loaded miles on that one, $2,700 booked, 
got them 267 a loaded mile finished off with uh three forks montana coming out to jackson wyoming whoo 26 000 pound load out of uh tree bark it's palletized load with uh tarping required 219 miles booked at 850 bucks got a killer rate of 388 a loaded mile on that one now eric ran for six days wednesday to wednesday but it was six days of driving stopped for a day in montana ended up grossing seven thousand fifty dollars in the six days ran 2401 loaded miles uh, at an average of 294 per loaded mile excellent job eric wonderfully wonderfully done uh, next, let's take a look. Uh, reefer, let's jump into Reefer. So we got Missouri City, Texas coming out to Clarksville, Arkansas. The driver on this one's Dan running a 25,000 pound load of frozen cookie dough at negative 10 on a Reefer. 543 miles, booked at 1200 bucks, got him an easy 221 per mile. Now, no show, uh, Missouri coming out to Lincoln, Nebraska. 21,000 pound load of dry goods, 362 miles, booked at 900 bucks, 249 a mile, and a Reefer stayed off on that one. Then St. Joseph, Missouri to Memphis, Tennessee. It's a 13,000 pound load of pet supplies. All palletized freight 48 degrees on a reefer protect from freeze uh 505 miles booked at 1850 got them 366 a mile to, to tennessee that headed out to arkansas out of searcy to woodburn oregon 36,600 pound load of pork at 28 degrees on a reefer 2,203 loaded miles booked at 4,500 bucks got them an awesome rate of 204 per loaded mile now dan ran for a week it's got a reefer sunday to sunday grossed 84.50 for the week ran uh 234 loaded mile on his 3613 loaded miles excellent job sir excellent job next we got a dry van the rest are going to be dry vans did quite well next one's going to be david coming out of lincoln nebraska going to moralton arkansas with a 44,000 pound load of scrap paper. 577 miles, booked at 1250, got him 217 a loaded mile. Then Moralton, Arkansas, zero deadhead to Gulfport, Mississippi. It's a 44,000 pound load of new paper. 465 miles, booked at 1150, got him 247 a loaded mile. Then Bogalusa, Louisiana, it's been a while, to Houston, Texas. 41,000 pound load of paper products. 366 miles, booked at 1,000 bucks, got him 273 a mile. And he finished off out of uh, DeRitter, Louisiana, going to Rich Richland, Washington. Longer run, of course, 44.5 on the way. A load of roll stock, 2,179 loaded miles, booked at 4,700 bucks, got him 216 per loaded mile on a ton of miles. Very, very well done. David killed it. A week on the road, $8,100 in gross, average 226 a loaded mile on his 3,587 loaded miles. Excellent job, sir. Excellent, excellent job. Next, we got an interesting one. Jacob's the runner on this one. It's a dry van coming out of Springfield, Oregon, going to Denver, Colorado. It's a longer run, 44,000 pounds of blueberry flax, uh, flax see granola bars probably 1254 loaded miles booked at 3200 bucks got them 255 a loaded mile on a ton of miles then get this out of la junta colorado coming out of colorado back to uh woodburn oregon so very close 37,000 pound load of coffee quite light 1445 loaded miles booked out of 3500 bucks got them 242 a loaded mile coming back to oregon friday to friday seven days on a road grow 6700 bucks on these two loads uh, ran 2,699 loaded miles at an average of 248 a loaded mile. Regular drive in, two long runs, came back to a good market. I believe you will do very, very well, sir. Um, and of course, uh, as mentioned, that was Jacob. Next and last, got Thomas running a uh, dry van coming out of uh, Texarkana, uh, Arkansas, going to Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. It's a 42,700 pound load of paper rolls, 839 miles, booked at 1575. Got him a buck 88 to come out of there. Then out of Sharon, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Sycamore, Georgia. It's a 38,000 pound load of construction products, a whole bunch of rivets, 964 miles, booked at 2,800 bucks. That's 290 a loaded mile for a bunch of rivets. Then Albany, Georgia to Houston, Texas. 45.5 on the way, load of beer, likely load to scale, 743. Uh, miles booked at 1358 got him a buck 83 coming back out it's all an averages game uh, Thomas ran uh, Friday to Friday grows 5733 around 2546 loaded miles at an average of two and a quarter on the dot very well done Thomas guys welcome back as they say no replacement for displacement now while I don't know about that I do know there is no replacement for good truck dispatching. And this is what we do. Guys, whether you're a leased on owner operator or a carrier, understand you can work with us. You can work with the same exact dispatchers who have proven themselves year in, year out, good market or bad to be able to get you guys top loads. Go back years in our playlist of the top paying loads in trucking and you can see during peak of the market, during down in the trolls, guys, our guys are able to get you the money, run you efficiently. Uh, you know, they understand the markets 
and enough said there. If you have the interest, if you have the tenacity, if you have the willingness to work and you wanna be able to actually make 2024 basically strong again, start making money again, uh, give us a call or text us at 801-448-6363. You can also visit us on our website at aftdispatch.com. Super simple, select if you're a carrier or an owner operator, put in your information, we'll get in touch with you, answer any and all your questions. And until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.